Hey, what's going on guys? On this video, we're going to talk to you about five big, big, big mistakes that we see arbitrage sellers, Amazon sellers making. And we're going to show you five mistakes that you can avoid to help make your life go a lot smoother in the Amazon space. Now, before we get started, we just want to show you guys that we're not just uh, full of crap. We've done about $41,000 or so in the last 30 days. 41497 actually. Can you see that? There you go. It's gonna be might be a little bit hard. Right Can you bring that up the, closer? Uh, well, the, when I get that close, then there's a reflection. Anyway, okay. So it's forty one four nine seven, and um, in case you guys were wondering, so I did this up in categories. Number one was shoes, and this is a, shows a thirty five hundred dollar profit. Toys fifteen almost sixteen hundred dollar profit. Video games twelve hundred. Beauty nine hundred. Health and beauty seven hundred eighty five. And uh, pet 429, grocery 376, sports 354. So I mean, like it all kind of adds up. But obviously, we we do a lot of. What was the issues. what's the projected or what does it say as far as profit in the last 30 days? Because a lot of people say, well, this is great, Matt, but what's the actual profit? Uh, well, this is 900 9,970. Now, when you do this, when you look at Inventory Lab, it's that there's some going to be some more stuff taken out of that, but that's still pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, and that is pretty awesome considering we don't do anything for the business. Basically, our, our you know, if you guys don't know us, our staff basically runs it for us, so we're super grateful for that. I repriced the repricer last night, though. Yeah. <laughs> Extra. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> because that's good. Guys, if you haven't repriced, like, do it right now. Like, stop watching and go do it. And then come back and watch us. But, <laughs> 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 all right. Okay, so, guys, so you want to stay tuned to the, the very end of this movie because we have five things that we really want to... Movie. Movie. It's a movie. We're, it's a production. Yeah. Now. We have a light. That must be what it is. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you really want to stay till through to the end because not only are we going to talk about five things, but afterwards I have one really, really, really big tip that I want to save till the very end. So, what's the number one big mistake that you people that you see with Amazon sellers? Okay, well, the number one biggest mistake. Okay, well, it's our ar for arbitrage specifically, right? Is not looking at the rank and then also not looking at the rank versus the price. So Keepa is a wonderful chart. It's free. It's an extension. There's several Keepa trainings free in the group in the uh, in our Facebook group, which we didn't share this. That's okay. We'll have it. Okay, <laughs> in our Facebook group, um, and that goes over. So basically, what it is, it already charts it for you. It shows you the rank, which gives you an idea around how many you're selling a month. Um, there's different ways you can find that those estimates, and then from there it gives you an idea as far as was price, what rank it is at that price. So there, say, there's an item that we were selling that was selling for forty dollars, and it was like at a twenty thousand dollar rank or twenty thousand dollar, <laughs> twenty thousand rank, and it flew off the shelves. Well, then um, we went out of stock. Everybody went out of stock, and it jumped, and there was only somebody on there for sixty five dollars. Well, the rank rose and rose so that basically it wasn't selling nearly as well because the market was not willing to pay $65 for it. Where they would pay $40 all day long, they really weren't as interested in it at $65. So that's just something to consider because, the, the I mean, it, you can still do it. It was still selling. The seller did sell their stuff. Um, it just took them a little longer. So there's a couple of things. But that's really the one thing is people not understanding rank, how often things sell, and, and then the price of it. Um, so that's one of the, that's, I'd say the very first one. Yeah. And then the second one is around Christmas. So Q4, Q4, the prices are inflated. All Which right. Which is, you guys know from there, it's fourth quarter. That's, you know, this, October, this time of the year between October and December. Yeah. Yes. So basically what happens is the prices get inflated and there will be, sometimes there are crazy prices on things. And you can even look at Keepa charts and you'll look at, you can look if some of the products have a few years on them and you'll see every December there were big spikes in the price. So what happens is sometimes when people are starting out, they're out there scanning and they're like, wow, this is an incredible thing. I'm going to be able to make so much money. And then Q1 hits and the price returns back to normal and they're like, oh crap, there's no more money in that. So that's the second big mistake. Give it, you want to kind of overall with price, you want to think of seasonality. Um, like, oh, we had these Valentine's Day wreaths and <laughs> we bought them and they didn't sell before Valentine's Day. We ended up selling those babies for $7. Before Valentine's Day, they were selling for $28. We took a loss on those. So it's just, these are the mistakes that we made. We're letting you guys know. So you want to think of about seasonality. Like, is it back to school? Is it really popular because it was a Mother's Day gift? Um, is it because of Q4? So just kind of as you're looking, the charts 
some things will be new, but a lot of them go back a few years and you can go ahead and check and see what it was doing at, at this time around Easter or around back to school, whatever it is. Yeah, and, you've, and you guys are here. Yeah, thanks for the likes, guys. You're welcome. Just throw a comment. If you have questions, whatever. Go ahead, guys. Okay. Appreciate you guys being here. So you can talk about this one. This is a big one. Yeah, so what the, the <laughs> third mistake that we see, and we've done it ourselves, is when you're desperate, right? And when you just want stuff to sell and you're not able to find some stuff, so you just throw in anything. Like, So you want to make sure that whatever you're sending in to Amazon is in new condition. It's brand new. Uh, hasn't been damaged. It's, uh, you know, uh, it matches exactly what the listing is on Amazon. So you don't want to do desperate stuff where it's like, well, I don't care. I just want something to sell, right? That's a big mistake that arbitrage sellers can make. And if they make those kind of mistakes, their account can get shut down. So you want to be very to the guideline of what Amazon's terms of service are. You want to make sure that what you're sending in uh, matches the listing is in brand new condition so that if you were somebody buying the item, uh, you'd be happy to get the item. You felt like this was exactly what you ordered. Yeah, and uh, to to also to go along with that is you're going to want to make sure your prep is really good so that everything is prepped well and, you know, so that it, um, if it needs to be bagged, it's bagged and it's bagged well, stuff like that. Um, if it needs to be bubble wrapped, it's bubble wrapped and bubble wrapped well, okay? Um, so those, the, those will protect, okay, let's see. We got that one, we got this one. We kind of went out of order. Okay, so this other one is this one, is skipping arbitrage altogether. So we have people who come in who have started private label right away. And basically, the reason why I don't recommend this, because there are some exceptions to the rule, but overall, you really need to start, need to start getting a feel for what sells, how it sells, how it moves through. And if you guys go ahead and go all in on a private label and purchase a thousand of those babies, Sometimes that is a real issue because you you didn't it wouldn't be a product you'd pick later. Like after you really got your feet wet, you understood how to read the charts, you understood what was a good buy, what wasn't a good buy. I mean, like now, look, people can send me stuff and I can look at it and I know pretty much if it's a good buy or a bad buy. Now there are still some things that obviously I I'm not psychic. I can't um, guess the future of the market, but I know what's a good buy and what's a bad buy. So unfortunately, we've had clients who before they found us, they have a garage full of inventory because it was a product that basically it wasn't going to work. There was too much competition. The price point that they would need to sell it at was way too low for what they purchased it for. And they ended up with thousands of these items just sitting there in their garage. So that's one of the things. Don't skip arbitrage, guys. Even if it's not the thing you're going to do forever, even if it's not what you're looking for, that's totally fine. Um, but what you want to do is do some of it. Get out there. Get out in the stores. Physically touch stuff. Get online and you know run some scans if you have tactical arbitrage. Um, or if not, just start shopping out there. Just check and see. Start finding some good finds and get them in there and get them selling. Because honestly, that is one of the best ways you'll know what's working. Thanks for the hearts. Um, because honestly, with us, when we very first started, uh, we tell this story a lot. We bought the One Direction purses, the Contigo mugs, and some Paula Deen pots and pans. And I thought no one was going to buy the Paula Deen pots and pans because at that point she'd been fired for saying racist comments. <laughs> I was wrong. People wanted to buy those pots and pans. But what um, they did not buy was the Contigo mugs, which I thought they were going to buy because I was like, oh, these are great. So this is what I'm saying. Like when you get started too, you're looking for like we get brand new people and they're like, I can't sell Lego and I can't sell Barbie and I can't. And I'm like, dudes, you gotta like think a little further outside the box. Don't think about the stuff that this total mainstream, right? Because that stuff is harder to get into. It's totally possible and you can, but. It takes some time. So you want to start thinking outside that box further. And the more practice you have on something, so see with those Contigo mugs, we lost a couple dollars, right, on each one. But it wasn't a big deal. Let's say we had been like, oh, we're going all in on our private label, and we bought 500 of those freaking Contigo mugs. Well, they would be Matt and Sherry mugs. And nobody wanted to buy them, and nobody wanted to buy them for the price that we needed to profit. Um, that would be a big, big problem, right? Because instead of, say, um, $10 loss, it would be like a $3,000. So that's one of the things. Don't skip arbitrage. There's, It's the thing that will, like, you know, um, in, in network marketing, they always say, hey, uh, learn while you earn. Well, <laughs> this is actually true. It works. As you're learning, you really will earn some money. Um, one of my favorite stories lately 
is one of our clients, um, she uh, does a mom blog. And what she does is she tests out various money-making opportunities that you can do from home and be a stay-at-home mom. And this is, this is the best part. So she started uh, Amazon and um, she's like, oh my gosh, this is so good. She stopped testing it and she started actually doing it. <laughs> and she just did a $5,000 day just the other day. So um, like that is incredible, right? So anyways, so you might, oh, I guess my warning here is you might get so interested in um, online arbitrage or, or retail arbitrage that you'll like continue to do it. But really don't skip it because it really will help you earn more and you can learn as you're going. Yeah, no, absolutely. In fact, we had a student, uh, we have, you know, I, I get students all the time. I get people who message me all the time and they say, man, I've got like 500 bucks to spend on inventory. And I went straight into private label. I'm like, no, guys, don't do that. You know, <laughs> it's a lot of risk to go on one product, go all in on that one product. And if it doesn't work out, you've blown your capital that you have for inventory. So it's much better to start small, start, you know, getting some feelers, get some sales, build up your confidence. Like Sherry's talking about, learn the process, understand it. And then from there, go into private label. Yeah, because definitely, I mean, we have launched a few different private labels and I can tell you they've all bombed. Um, <laughs> we have recently started looking at some possible ones. Um, uh, granted, you know, we have a lot of different time commitments, but we finally got really awesome training that I feel really great about. It's actually in the course. <laughs> and, um, you know, Q1 is a good time to start looking at uh, private labels because, and the other options, right? Including starting to include wholesale or whatever it is, right? If you've been all RA, maybe it's time to start looking at some OA online arbitrage. If you're all online arbitrage, maybe weave in some wholesale or some, st start looking at private label. Like Q1 is a great time to do that because you can still continue to do your sales and hopefully you guys are getting a system together. That literally a system together is the thing that made our lives easier better allowed us to hire i mean like it really is key and if you guys are looking for a system we happen to teach our exact one in amazon secrets academy but yeah yeah if you guys are interested you can just go to oaprofits.com i just wanted to see if there was a question here did you want to say something before we yeah, answer no. that question okay so jay says hey guys been merch fulfilled and f okay merchant fulfilled for you guys that aren't familiar that's basically selling on your own and for a few months and about to prepare and send in my first Amazon FBA shipment. Awesome. Books. books. Any advice or suggestions? Hey, that sounds great, Jay. Um, with books, you know, um, books can be very profitable. Uh, yeah, we, we don't sell that? a lot of books, but as far as the prep on them, make sure that your, whoa, you're, you're covering that. Oh, there you go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> make sure that your conditions match exactly. Um, if there's writing inside the books, I mean, make sure that's all on there as far as your your conditions and stuff um if there's earmarking stuff like that make sure it matches exactly um then you can just go ahead and label them some people do bag them people do appreciate a bag but you don't have to um okay so the last uh mistake yeah right? number one number five mistake go ahead is not taking any action at all honestly guys i see people again and again they they kind of are looking they're thinking right you know and and uh, we have people who kind of were starting this and then they go do something else you know some other shiny object catches their eye and they're like this is going to be the thing right and then they're back being like hey i'm back on amazon because amazon does work um and then i'm not saying there's not other things that do but for if you guys are just starting out in your entrepreneurial journey entrepreneurial journey i don't know of a better place than amazon it really does teach you so much without you having to have a following without you having to have people um you know, willing to buy directly from you, right? All you have to do is go out there and find product that people already want to buy. Amazon handles all the marketing side of it because marketing is a whole thing in and of itself, right? So that's one of the things is get started. Don't let it stop you, right? Just start now. You can literally, I know some people are like, okay, I'll wait. I'm going to wait till after the first of the year. I'm going to wait till Valentine's. I'm going to wait until the sun is directly above me and blah, blah. I mean, don't do that. <laughs> If you want to get started, do it right now today. Like literally, if you're at work or whatever, take your lunch hour, um, go scan some stuff. If you have the app on your phone, the, the Amazon seller app, which is free. The seller app, which is included in the monthly fee, which is $40. If you guys haven't done that and you're like, hey, you know what, I'm really gonna do this, then go join Amazon right now, okay? Like take the action right today. 
um, it really does make a difference because honestly, there are so many things that I have not done today and then all of a sudden it's the next day and the next day and the next day and the next day, right? So with, um, <laughs> when we went to Tony Robbins, um, there's this eating Thing. It's a clean eating where you eat like vegetarian and it's a 10 day kind of like cleanse thing and uh, a fourth day they talk to you about it and they're like, okay, so, you know, really we want commitments from people. So we committed and I was like, okay, cool. After we get out of here, we're going to go get some fast food because we were driving home. We had like a seven hour drive. I'm like, okay, we'll start on Monday. We'll go to the grocery store and start right then. And he was like, guys, you need to start right now, this moment. And I was like, oh man. So we're like driving around Southern California looking for something that just basically veggies with nothing else. <laughs> and we found it, we did find it, right? So it's doable. And then that 10 days, right? I mean, it paid off. Both of us felt better, both of us had more energy and it like shifted the way we ate and it still has even after all these months. I mean, at least, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it, it changed. And so taking that action right now, rather than in a moment, in an hour, I mean, anytime you're in, you're inspired, like you're like, this is the thing, do it, do it right now. Yeah. There's something to be said for that for sure. Absolutely. Steven said me, I guess he was saying that, uh, talking about the distraction and then somebody was asking about uh, CA or .com. So they're in Canada. So we have international students that are selling on amazon.com. Uh, amazon.com is the potential is huge there in the United States. And uh, there's so much potential just here in the United States. Some of the Canada sellers I know, they sell them both .com and both and CA. I don't, I don't really know much about um, setting up on the CA side of it, but I know they do both. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, last final thing that we wanna talk about guys, and this is just kind of a bonus thing for you. So we've worked with a lot of students. We have students who are doing six figures in a single month on Amazon. We have students who are just kind of like struggling. They've been doing a long time and they've been struggling. And what we've noticed guys is the difference is, is uh, what's going on between six inches between your ears. So if things aren't going well for you in your life, if things are, if your things are a struggle, it's because of the way that your persistent thoughts have been thinking and has led you to the point where you are right now. So I, I want to point out that, yeah, I, mean, I know it's a little bit tough love, right? But this is the stuff that people need to hear that if, if there's something that you can do as far as a big mistake, you've, you've got to look at, you know, yourself, you've got to take a look and say, is it not working because of me? And what can I change about me to have things that work? You know, I used to be say, said that, you know, in the network marketing space, they say, you gotta work harder on yourself than on your business. And you know what? It's true in Amazon as well. You've gotta work on you. If things aren't going well for you, it's because you haven't worked on you. So you gotta make sure that you work on yourself. Uh, read books, attend seminars, hang out with people who are doing better than you are so that you can learn a whole new level. Uh, these are the things that for us have helped make a difference for us. And Matt knows what he's talking about because uh, he struggled pretty hard. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, we I all still, struggle. I mean, I, but, still, I still have issues, right? But I mean, like, basically you think about sometimes <laughs> and being an entrepreneur, you can be in tears, literal tears, right? You know, no sales came in and you worked really hard. <laughs> and then the next day, you know, you had 50 sales and you're jumping around like a crazy person so excited. But it's the, it's the me overall mental mindset that is going to serve you, whether you had a good sales day or whether you didn't. Because a lot of things happen, ups and downs. The people who do the very best in this business are either very, very, um, they go just by the numbers, they don't let any of the crazy <laughs> in their head help them make any decisions, or they are really working, like they work on themselves, they read all the time, they, they have mentors, they have coaches, they, you know what I mean? Like that, it, so you don't have to have any of that because honestly, we did it the hard way. We gutted it out and it was really brutal. We don't want that for you. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why our course very specifically has um, a whole group aspect where we do live group coaching so people can have um, support from other people who are doing it and other people who are out there succeeding, other people who are out there um, in the same space that they are too. They can come ask questions um, that kind of thing. So that is so key and it's crucial and we really believe in it. So. Uh, if there's a mindset thing that I could recommend, it would be to start gratitude. Literally start your day and end your day with gratitude. Wake up and say, thank you, thank you, thank you. And mean it because you're alive, you're breathing in and out, right? 
you are, you know, you're a human. Um, someone somewhere must love you, right? Like there are things. You can just be grateful that you have a soft surface to sleep on or that there's a window that you can look out on and keeps the rain out or that there's a roof over your head, like anything like that, right? There is so much to be grateful for. And then same thing at the end of the night, end of the day, end your day with gratitude. Think about something amazing that happened that day. It could be anything. It could be you held your dog and petted it and it looked up at you with its big adoring eyes and you were like, oh, that was amazing. <laughs> you know what I mean? It could be a wonderful date with your sweetheart. It could be a time with your kids, whatever it is. Focus on that and just feel that gratitude because literally gratitude will, you cannot be angry and you cannot be fearful if you are truly grateful. And anger and fear are the things that screw people up across the board. So. That gratitude practice is key. That's the thing I would recommend to do to start with. There are so many things to do and possible, and don't let it overwhelm you. One little change, one keystone action is what I would call them, can change your whole mindset. And gratitude is huge. Yeah, one of our students who's doing six figures, and I testify what you're saying, well said, um, in a single month, you know, what I notice about him is that he's not like waiting for the results to show up in order to be happy, right? Because this is, this is what people do. We wait for the results to show up and then we're happy. And so what he does is he brings the happiness, the great, the gratitude into his life now, and then the results come from that. So uh, to, to speak to what you're saying, it just makes the life, the process go a lot smoother. Can you grind it out without the gratitude? You can, but it just makes the process go a lot smoother. It's so. not as fun. More mistakes happen. It, makes it like, hard. Oh, yeah. yeah, we've been there. Yeah, so let's see which comments you guys have okay. here. Okay, split FBA shipments are hurting my ROI. Some shipments have average of one to two. Bucks Seems I have to send in more product to get lower. Yes. Yes, you do. Yep. <laughs> you want to send in more yeah, product. Yeah, so he's wondering it. about uh, with shipments, do I need a lot of stuff to, because Amazon's going to split the shipments. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, I was telling somebody the other day, yeah, my 25, 40 items at least for an FBA shipment. It's better if you do a shipment of like 150 items, 300 items, uh, because if Amazon's going to split the shipment, then you got to make sure it's worth your while to, uh, you know, because you combine all this stuff together in a box and you want it to be as little of cost per item as you can if you're doing it um, that way. And it will really depend too on the, um, on how Amazon has you set up specifically, because here's the deal. For a while, we were sending to California and it was amazing. Like all of our stuff would go to California. It would get there in a day. It was great. And it was like, so we could do a shipment of say 60 things, fill up a box, maybe a little extra. Like it went so easy. And then Amazon started having to send it to Illinois and uh, New Jersey and F Ruskin, Florida um, and Texas. So it was split it up to four different places. And so then we needed to be shipping in more like 120 at least to have all those boxes have enough stuff in them so that we are, our price was down. So you're going to want to figure out because Amazon will continue. They might change you up just like they did for us, but they will have you sending to specific places, um, for a while and maybe forever. I don't know. I mean, we're still pretty much sending to those four and it's been over a year. So, um, really I would recommend just starting that and then figuring out about how many items. So then, so then it's like, instead of shipping twice a week, you ship once a week, that will save you some money on the, this side of it. But then the flip side of that is your stuff doesn't get in as, as fast. So you really need to make some decisions on how fast you want to get your items in because sometimes the faster they go in, the more money you'll make. And then the, <laughs> the even other thing to think about is, um, when you're sourcing, maybe source a little bit more. That's really the key. I mean, more more product is always going to be really key. So we have, uh, it was crazy. I had a breakdown yesterday. It wasn't even about the sales. It was getting your website in order for your private label. That happens. Honestly, anything that is new like that, that is just overwhelming or you start to feel like, you know, you're not sure what to do. It, like it just start kick, kicking that stuff off. So I have a really good tip for that. Okay, so stop and lay down on your couch or the floor or whatever with no distractions, no TV. I mean, obviously if you have kids, you have to deal with that, but then they're running around. But I'm like, no TV, no no music. And um, I usually lay with a dog on my belly and I just pet her and I just look at the ceiling. And what it does is it just kind of calms down. So it's like, you imagine like if your brain was in this red angry state, 
it just calms it down <laughs> and then you're able to make better choices you're able to move forward faster it just it really helps me so I yeah hope that helps you yeah no for sure yeah and i appreciate you saying that because you know it happens right i mean you, you oh, run yes. into walls and stuff like that and for me, you know, uh, what helps is just kind of break it down to small bite-sized pieces. So something you can be proud of yourself, small wins. You know, today I, you know, got my header right for my website. <laughs> you know, today I was able to create an email address for my website. And so something you can just scratch off and you say, yes, I did it, small win. Because that's how it happens. How big things happen is these little tiny steps. And, you know, sometimes we don't give ourselves enough uh, acknowledgement for just the little steps that we're taking awesome. so yeah all right cool guys all right guys well hey appreciate you guys for watching this subscribe to us on youtube and uh fulfillment you know. with matt and sherry that's our youtube channel yeah and if you guys are interested oaprofits.com is where you can find out more about our course and if you're not in our free group we'll go ahead and put the link in the comments as well because you we have a lot of great free training in the free group all right guys hey take care guys